Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Jesse, this is my garage. Here's our project car, 300ZX, and today we're talking about, we're still finishing up the rear suspension, so I wanted to take a moment to talk about adjustable control arms for the rear suspension of your vehicle for Nissan and 90 sports cars, 240, 300ZX, Skylines, all of them use a lot of the same basic definitely layout and a lot of the same components, um, aftermarket components can be used on different vehicles. But what we're gonna talk about is kind of like why you need them, you know, we see all these aftermarket parts and upper control arm, tow arm, traction arm, what exactly do they do? Which ones do you need? Which ones might not you need? And why would you need them? But first off, I'm gonna tell them you need them right now if you're going to lower your car like we are doing with this car. Once we lower the car, we change the geometry of the suspension. Now, if you've been watching all my other videos, you've heard me say that probably multiple times. When we do that, we need to bring everything back into alignment. Otherwise, our wheels are gonna be going like this. We'll be burning out tires all over the place. We won't have a lot of traction. So the three main traction arms in the rear is gonna be your upper control arm. That's gonna control the camber. Our tow arm, that's of course gonna control the tow. And then a traction arm, and that one is a little, that's gonna actually allow you to adjust your suspension and tune it a little bit more. If you only were to get one arm, I would highly suggest the upper control arm. Now, this one is going to allow you to adjust your camber. So we're gonna tilt the wheel back and forth like this. And once we lower the car, the, it's gonna automatically suck the wheel in, so we need to be able to push it out and that is going to allow us to do that. It's gonna be an adjustable length so we can do some uh, custom tuning on our suspension and get the uh, either more or less camber. And this works for both ways. If you want more camber, that'll allow you to do that. You want to straighten your tire out and get a little bit less camber, it'll allow you to do that. So you get all kinds of options. All right, so we've got where it bolts up to the knuckle and where it bolts up to the subframe and then our, we're gonna, our coilovers gonna bolt through here. So when we do these factory ones and we wanna replace them, you are gonna have to remove your coil over to get this out of the way. But, uh, so this is what that one looks like. You can tell, if you wanna know why it's designed like this, kind of hollow, you might think, hey, it needs reinforcement. Stay to the end, because I'm gonna talk about construction on these arms a little bit later. Right now, we're just gonna go over the top. And so this is the aftermarket arm that we are gonna be replacing it with. Now this one is an ISR upper control arm and you can see it just has the half circle so it makes it easier to replace pull in and out even work on the coilover or your strength and shock system without having that other part in place so this is part of the aftermarket performance where they manufacture something a little bit different with uh, you know maybe performance or service oriented goals in mind that are gonna make this easier to work on your whole suspension so it's got threads in here and then a threaded bolt here and then a threaded bolt right here and this is how we're going to adjust the length of this arm to adjust our camber now anytime we replace this arm any of these arms any suspension components we're gonna have to put it on alignment rack to get it into specification but when i set this up i'm actually going to put anti-seize on all the threads right here because we're going to want to keep those good i'm going to keep them lubricated and working for years and then we're actually going to match this one up the length of this stock one and the length of our aftermarket one, we're gonna match those up as best we can so we can get it as close as possible, but we're still gonna have to take it and get it aligned. So that's why I personally, I like to do a lot of this stuff all at once because I don't wanna, for one, throw something on there and just make my alignment worse than it was, and for two, I don't wanna pay to get a whole bunch of alignments done. All right, the second arm that I wanna talk about is our rear toe arm. That's what this one looked like. Now, if you have a Hikus model car, doesn't matter what it is, 240, 300ZX, Skyline, anything, your rear toe arm is going to be your Hikus arm. So you'll either delete your Hikus and switch to a solid toe arm like this one, or the aftermarket one that we're gonna talk about, or you'll just you know work on your Hikus system and that adjust toe there, you'll have a, a whole different setup there, so you can disregard this. But if you do not have Hikus, this is the second arm I would highly suggest replacing. You will need to replace this arm and the upper control arm when you lower your car to get it back into alignment. And you can tell this one is super dirty. This is uh, how we knew our subframe bushings were bad. This is the uh, other part to this. You can see it's wet moisture, just debris sticking to it. The other subframe bushing sat right here. Once it cracked and broke, leaked all over here. So, you know, you can tell when 
when they're totally bad when you see something like this on your stock toe arm. But also again, hollow design, we're gonna talk about that later. If you were just to keep these, you could replace the bushings at the end of these to give it some more life, freshen stuff up a little bit. But we're gonna go ahead and replace this whole unit. And now this, when we adjust the toe, let's say this is the wheel and tire, and this is the front, you're the front of the car. And the toe is gonna be how the tire is pointed in or out. And that's what that arm is going to adjust. It's gonna adjust how much it's poked out or how much it's poked in. So the camber arm is gonna give us a vertical movement like this. And the toe arm is gonna give us a lateral movement like so, back and forth a certain amount. So here is our aftermarket arm for our toe arm. You know, nothing special. It is angled. So this one's angled, as you can see, that one doesn't have quite as bit of an angle, a little bit, but this one has some more angle to it, and that's to allow for the suspension travel when it goes up and down and it compresses on our suspension travel, that this arm does not hit our rear subframe. So this is some more of the aftermarket engineering that we get when we go to these aftermarket parts that we're not gonna get with the factory one. For one, we're lowering our car. Nissan didn't make this car, your car, any of these cars, with the, they didn't engineer it for however low you wanna go with your car. Once you start lowering your car, it's like messing with power. We have to get a custom tune for our suspension, just like we have to get a custom tune for our ECU to know what everything's going on. So once we start lowering stuff, we don't want this arm to hit our subframe when everything compresses. So this will give us the extra clearance that we need on the angle versions. Now there is angled and non-angled versions, so definitely, you know, know what you're ordering when you're ordering it. So that arm too has that eccentric bolt. So the camber arm has an eccentric bolt, which is the upper control arm and your toe arm has an eccentric bolt. And we're gonna talk about those here shortly, but next I wanna talk about the traction arm. So the third arm on our three arms that are on our back suspension is a traction arm and it looks like this. Now this one is actually reinforced. It's hollow design, but it is reinforced right here. It's a small little guy. Well, that's probably why they reinforce this one. Remember, we're gonna talk about construction here in a minute. Uh, if you can see, this bushing is destroyed. I don't know if you can see that, but it's not in good operating condition. You see a bunch of the rubber is coming out. It's cracked, it's broken. Probably wouldn't take too much to press this out of what it, where it is. So not only, we're actually gonna replace this arm, but if you weren't, I would replace that bushing. So this arm does not control camber and does not control the toe. This one controls like, so this arm will help with like bump steer, suspension response. So this one is not as vital to replace. That's why it's number three on my list. I'd say if you had to, if you're going to replace your arms, which I would highly suggest when you're modifying your suspension, start with the upper control arm and the toe arm first. This guy can come later on down the road and doesn't necessarily alter your suspension as long as you match him up with the OEM one before you start tuning it like the other two do. Here's our aftermarket one, ISR. Of course, it's just a simple design with the two bolted and we'll adjust the length of it there. We'll be setting this, of course, to OEM spec. This one you would more tune for the actual handling of your suspension during whatever track, like if you're a track and you're noticing you have a wheel hop, or the suspension just isn't responding like you want, that's when you would start adjusting this to play with how the suspension is going to handle, where it's going to be set, and not necessarily on the alignment. So that rear tension arm is going to adjust like the pitch, the position, which is also going to affect the uh, suspension response and rotation during travel. So that's a, a much more tunable item that's going to be tuned on the street or most likely at the track. I would say for your everyday street car, you probably don't need to do that. I But uh, if you can get all the arms, great. If you can only get two, get the camber and the toe. If you can only get one, get the camber, start with there. That'll at least allow you to straighten out your tires a little bit more, get you some more life on the tire wear, and get some more traction on the ground because that's how you're gonna put the power to the pavement and make your car fast. So, so those are the three arms pretty much in the, in the order that I would uh, highly suggest replacing them. And if you can do it all at once, even better because then you don't have to get your car aligned one time. All right, so I said we were going to talk about the how these are designed and the construction of this. So as you can see, 
this is designed hollow. It's got bends in it, like this extra lip is gonna give it some like rigidity, make it harder to bend. But why they're designed like this, and that's why you might not think like, oh, I'm gonna reinforce all these and I want the biggest and the beefiest one because I don't ever want these to bend. That's wrong. Because if you're in an accident or you hit a curb or if you're drifting and you know you run into somebody or hit a curb, go off the thing, or if you're on road course, go off, hit something, and your suspension starts to buckle and it's gonna snap, you want these arms to break first because if these arms are stronger than your subframe, your subframe can break, or even worse, it can damage where the subframe mounts to the chassis. So these arms are designed to break first, bend first before the subframe bends. And these are designed as well to break first. You don't want an overbuilt control arm that's going to damage your subframe because it's easier to replace and much cheaper to replace one of these guys than it is your entire subframe. So that is the construction of those. Now when you're looking at something and making the choice, definitely don't think I want the biggest, bulkiest, heaviest, overbuilt arm because that is not going to uh, be good for you in the long run if something happens. All right, well, last thing on my list, like I was talking about before when we were going over the arms, your upper control arm and your toe arm are gonna have room for adjustment. We have factory bolts called eccentric bolts. Uh, they're a long bolt with a little bit of offset on it and then a washer on the end and it's got some camber degrees on there. And now when you take your car to the alignment shop, they're gonna throw it on there, put some fancy lasers on there and sensors on your wheels and then they can adjust the camber and the toe by adjusting that bolt clockwise or counterclockwise. It's gonna allow some camber adjustment. Now, when you lower your car, you're automatically gonna go lower than those can adjust for you. The specs of those bolts are now out of here. If you have eccentric bolts at the end of your new lengthened arm for your custom tune on your suspension, those bolts can move under vibration come loose, twist themselves. I mean, we all know about a bolt coming loose or vibrating. And when you just have a bolt that it's still gonna have that adjustment on there, but we don't need it anymore because we control the length at the arm. So we control the length at the arm and not on the eccentric bolt. So this is a little piece that a lot of people might just not know what's going on down there. And if you've never done an alignment or looked into exactly what goes into it, you might not know that those bolts are down there and that's how stuff gets adjusted. So when that becomes basically the weak, weak link of our alignment settings, we want to delete that bolt. So we want to delete the upper control arm eccentric bolt and the low, uh, the toe arm eccentric bolt and get rid of those. That way we can lock in our length on our arm. That'll give us the alignment we want. We don't have to worry about any bolt moving and adjusting our alignment because it has the ability to do that. So we're gonna get an eccentric bolt lockout kit. All right, so for our eccentric bolt lockout, it's gonna be right here. Now this is a grade 8.8 .8 bolt. And um, then some pretty heavy duty spaced out washers and a nice little nut on the end. This is what we're gonna replace all of our eccentric bolts with is this. This is not gonna allow any movement. It's gonna be a strong enough bolt because you don't wanna put some weak bolt in there that's gonna bend or twist. Right here, these ones are from GK Tech. Now, without the high kiss, you're gonna have a total of four of these bolts, two for the upper control arm, one on each side, two for the toe arm, one on each side. And of course, if you have a high kiss model and you're keeping your high kiss, then it is going to be just two for the upper control arm. All right, well, that's it for this video talking about rear control arms. If you watch this video, you should have a pretty good understanding about how they work, which ones you need, why you probably need them. If you want to see more on this project car or any other thing we have going on in this channel, where we talk about different cars, different projects, different parts you might need, upgrading stuff, the JDM Classic Sports Cards, hit that subscribe button. If you got any value out of this, please hit that like button. It helps other people find this information. If you want to support us, head over to Patreon or at Jesse's Garage, kick down a few dollars, and I will send you out a retro JDM sticker. And follow me on Instagram at Build Theory to see what's going on day to day in the garage. Because a lot of stuff goes on, I might not make it to YouTube. So until then, I will see you next time.